threw incense all over. <laughs> Whoopsie. Where the fuck is your lighter? Right there. Okay, let's start. <laughs> you gotta let it go a little while. <clears throat> That's what she said. All right, doing it? Yep. Let's show it go. Go. You want to start or you want me to start? I'll start. Okay, start. I'm just waiting you to get the thing going there. It's going. I got it. We're on it. It's all, all, all working. Hello and welcome to this epic disaster for a new week, a brand new week. And we're doing the things that we always do. Because we enjoy doing those things. Lighting up the incense. Oh, I have to break this. Chatting about what we're going to talk about. Um, I think we mentioned this before, but most of the time, we don't know what we're going to talk about. Uh huh. Um, we don't know how many times we're going to curse on the air. Sorry. <laughs> it's a pain thing. It's um, a pain. And so we just get together and we kind of start. We don't do a whole lot of planning, which is pretty obvious if you listen to the show. Ouch. God. What is <laughs> You wound yourself with incense so many times. I don't think I should be trusted with flame. I, I don't think you should either. Is it done? Are you done? It's on. It's burning. Uh, and then we always start the show with our live beer review, which is what we're going to do. Today we have some, go, uh, another beer from Minnesota. We had a couple weeks ago a beer from Minnesota. My wife brought back. We both liked it. We did. I actually I had it. another one last night. I saw mm. that. There's only one left in the fridge, which Good is surprising stuff. to me. So we have a new one today. Why don't you tell the lovely friends playing at home? What we're going to be drinking today. All right. I'm in process of pouring mine, so give me yes, just you are. a second. I have please. a much... Look, it still did not get clean. I don't know what it is with that glass. It's this just, large it's glass doesn't get clean. And you might want to start cleaning it by hand. I probably... I need a little... I need one of those little foam things that you can stick down into the bottom. One of those little... It looks like a toilet brush, like a teeny toilet brush. I need, I'll start cleaning with the toilet brush. There you go. Okay. So this is... You missed. This is called uh, Indeed Brewing Company, and Indeed, it, Indeed, and the uh, oh, the can is. I'm sorry, the beer is Mexican Honey. It's uh -huh. an imperial lager, and it's yes. beautiful. I just poured it, and it's gorgeous. It is very gold. Mm -hmm. It's golden color. Okay, so this is an imperial lager brewed with Mexican orange blossom honey, Ooh. which sounds heavenly. Okay. Um, so Maybe. it says here, humming with a citrus and floral fiesta for the senses. Mm -hmm. Mexican honey imperial lager is brewed with Mexican orange blossom honey and amarillo hops. Refreshing and dangerously smooth. This award-winning cerveza is all buzz, no bite. That's cute. I like that. All buzz, so, no bite. Yep. And this How much alcohol? Oh, uh, eight percent. Well, that's a buzz. And this this comes in pint-sized cans, uh -huh. um, and it's brewed in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm a little concerned. Why? Well, eight percent. Uh huh. And we should go ahead and say we're we're recording two shows today. Yeah, because you're going to be out of town next week. I got to go out of town next week, so we're going to do two shows today. Indeed. And so we're having an eight percent alcohol beer. <laughs> but the other the next one is only five and a half. Still, that's two. That's thirteen percent alcohol. Well, right I've already there. had a cocktail because the first thing I do when <laughs> I walk into your house is make a cocktail almost every time. I'm I'm. You used to call me your Kramer. Um, you would just break into the house and, and raid the refrigerator. That's kind of what I do. No, um, that's okay. It's kind of my thing, but but I don't do that everywhere. I only do it here, and it kind of shocked your wife a little bit at first. Whoa. Your wife was like, what is she doing? Why is she in our fridge? And I don't know why. I That's just who I am. That's just what I do. Okay. Back to the beer. This is the first time we've had this beer. Yep. I will say we've had a lot of beer, not just on this show, but our, our former show. Just in general. We had beer. We did live beer review for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't recall a beer tasting like this. Ever? Like ever in your life? Nope. Or just it's a very ever unique show? flavor. Oh, okay. See what you think. Oh, it smells good. It smells, well, hold on. It smells like pot. No. No, that's just me. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Get out. It smells good. Let me taste it. I think you like it. That's pretty good. Interesting. I yeah. can taste a little bit of orange in there. Yes, absolutely. There's definitely citrus in there. Um, we have this discussion before. Now, I say orange. Do you say orange? I'm from California. That so I say orange. They say California California oranges. They say that a lot. They say California oranges. oranges. I've discovered it isn't a regional thing. Okay. California oranges. It's, it's Florida oranges. Oh, yeah. And what is this right here? This is my forehead. So you say forehead. I grew up saying forehead. Forehead. Because you are on this side of the United States. I was on that side. My middle name? 
Uh, forest. Would you say forest? I say forest. If you're going out to, uh, I'm going to go walk around the forest for a while. Walk around the forest. You say forest. Uh huh. I say orange. You say orange. How do you say tomato? Uh, I say tomato. Okay. But I, I, it that's always because I I've always tried to find some connection, and you're saying it's California, but no, there are people in California. If you watch TV, you'll you'll hear some people say oranges. There and it it doesn't matter. I can't find a connection. They're probably transplants. It could be, but I don't think so. Okay, so uh, another thing I noticed about you when we first met is that Uh you have a sister named Laura, Mm -hmm. but you call her Laura. I always said Laura, but it's L-A-U, so that would be ah. No, it's Laura. uh, No, that would be L-O-R-A. No, that would be Laura. I know. It's Laura. Ah, ah. You say Laura, which would just be L-A-R-A. No, Laura. That would be Lara. No. Yes. No. Yes. Lies. Ah. A U. Ah. All right. Explain. Oh, explain. Wow. Tara and Tara. Um, I don't have an explanation. You can't explain English. It's all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I. But I'm. I'm very uh, interested in those kind of weird little dialect kind of things. I am too. Yeah. Um. As a matter of fact, today. <clears throat> pardon me. At work, I spent four hours on a conference call. With dialect. In which I spent. I said. Three sentences. Oh. So I, but I had to listen to the entire thing because I had to know what was going on so that I could relay information to others that weren't able to join the call. This is a, a call that is uh, put in place due to a high priority situation in which there, uh, one of our clients has an outage. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the people working on this particular outage mm-hmm. uh, are from India. Okay. And listening to their dial, their accents. You're not going to make fun of them, are you? No, not at all. Uh, but just listening to their accents yes. uh, for four hours, mm-hmm. I found myself almost wanting to wanting do it. to yeah. talk like that, and I and I can't help it. Um, and and I felt like every time I had to say something, I made sure that I enunciated what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it without, because it would come across as making fun. And I know Probably, that. Probably, yes. Um, I used to, I uh, had a job years ago where I had to speak to uh, one of our vendors and his name was Antonio. Mm-hmm. And that's how he said it. He's Antonio. But I have, like my sister used to go, she would spend summers with my grandmother in Florida and, and she would pick up, you know, a South Florida accent <laughs> is, is very close to a New York accent. Okay. It's not Southern. Mm-hmm. It's very, very... Um, I'm Depending say on where Yankee. you're at, though, because there's Maybe. a lot of very Southern in well, Florida. Especially Northern Florida. But Southern Florida is very Northern sounding. And also now it's gotten even more, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say Latina, Latino, uh, Latin. Hispanic? Hispanic, maybe. Okay. Um, Hispanic. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's a picking up. I mean, it's, it's a... A cultural melting pot. Oh yeah, but you Absolutely. know, it, it to me it always sounded a lot more close to New York than it sounded to Georgia. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so my sister would go down there because my, my cousins that's where they were raised and they all had that kind of accent and then my sister would pick it up. Mm-hmm. So I think if you if you went and spent some time in India, you would probably pick up an Indian accent. Probably. Or even like if you went to uh, Britain you or know, Australia, that would be awesome to pick up like that. Could I would you imagine get, living in Australia for ten years? How uh, would you sound? Uh, yeah. Because I'm watching like... this show right now on Netflix because I'm trying to really get out of the dark deep evil uh-huh. things I've been watching and get into something lighter and happier. So I'm watching this show on Netflix about people that build houses and it's in Australia and everything they say ends up in a question mm-hmm. and it's it's almost annoying Canada but that's too. just how they talk. Yeah. And I wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little it's a little weird. I know there's some um locations in the country like United States. Mm-hmm. Regional. Sure locations that in their sentences and kind of a question too so some kind of, of that in minnesota yeah yeah but well again, usually that's the canada thing okay so we're gonna do two shows so we gotta we gotta cram them in we gotta right, do a lot of stuff this. usually we do a zob mondo while we're doing our beer we should do it now we then. should do a zob mondo if you don't know what zob mondo is it's a would you rather game i might have a would you rather on my own so we'll do zob mondo and then i might ask you a question Go ahead. Okay, so mine's green. Yours I'll ask me green. a green question. I've got a green question here. But first, please tell the listeners what the green category is. What you would Let's tell the listeners what you're going to win. <laughs> tell the, them what he's won, Bob. The green category is ethics slash intellect. I have zero of either Let's today. see. As an alleged murderer, Ooh. can you believe... Uh, they're actually it's a murderer question. So this is awesome. Okay, remember this is a would you rather question. Yes. 
I get to be a murderer in this scenario. Would you rather? Uh huh. This is. I don't have light. Ah, perfect. <laughs> As an alleged murderer, try to beat a lie detector test. Uh huh. And if you fail, you would go to jail for life. Ooh. Or serve five years in prison, after which you will be released with no further questions asked. So, you're a murderer. Okay. Period. Gotcha. You, I'm a murderer. And would you rather try to beat a lie detector test? And and, and, and if, if I you fail, fail, you'll go to jail for life. Right. Forever. For the rest of my existence. Right. Or serve five years in prison without the lie detector test and then released with no questions asked. Five years. Absolutely. Yeah. Five years. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Right? You're a freaking murderer. It's not like you've got morals. And I'm horrible at lying. That's that's why that's why I chose it is because I'm horrible at lying. All right. My wife says that all the time. And I think that's some of, that's one of the weirdest things to say because like, how do we know? Because I've tried. <laughs> no. You could be lying. Trying to convince me that you're horrible at lying. And well, so I'm not like, trying to convince you of anything. I'm just telling you a fact. That's maybe a lie, though. You could be telling me a lie. But I don't give a shit if you believe me or uh, not. That that in itself could be a lie. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you're not going to trust any word no, that comes out of my mouth. You could be a liar. I, I might be. Everybody's a freaking potential liar. Sometimes I, I wish I were better at lying. All right, so you would rather... Do the five years. Do the five years. I would, too. Okay, so I here's your do colors. It. I don't want to spend any time in prison, though. Nobody wants to spend time in prison. That's why we act... That's totally... I mean, some that's, people, not a, that's not a correct statement. There are some people who do some, want to spend time in prison. Some people only act ethically because they don't want to go to prison. I know. I act ethically because it, I'm ethic. an ethical person. <laughs> uh, it pays well. All right, I'm dropping. Here we go. It's red. a red one. Okay, so the red category stands for... Give me some red, yeah. Pain slash fear slash discomfort. Oh, no. Yeah. So this will be fun. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Make me uncomfortable. Give me some discomfort and pain. Would you... Marry me. Oh, I mean, in some cases, yeah, that is true. I've been there, done that. Okay. All right, would you rather be distracted all night by a dripping faucet sound... Yeah. Or by a drop on your head every hour, a drop of water. Um, that's an easy one. And by the way, if you hear the panting, that's not me. <laughs> it's the dog. <laughs> it's been thundering, and both of the dogs have to be in the studio. We couldn't leave them out of the studio today they because it has been thundering, and they the get door. a little they get a little anxious. That's kind of a crazy question. I don't know who would who would want to spend all night with water dripping on their head. Okay, but but which which one could you could you s- I could not s- go nuts? I could sleep with the water dripping and with no problem. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh huh. I Same would here. have no problem, but water on my head. Well, who? some people are so uh, audio that that um, that they cannot go to sleep. Like, okay, I if I'm sleeping that. next to someone but who's snoring, I will not fall asleep. I, I kind of understand that, but still, water dripping on your head. How are you going to sleep? That's a cra- uh, That's two weeks in a row. Have that you I've never gotten. been camping? It's a thing. It happens. What? Water dripping on your head. And you go to sleep. I mean, you, you don't. get drunk enough. You yeah. don't. You you cannot fall it asleep when with, camping unless you're drunk. It happened with John McCain. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sleep the whole time. I read his bio. That is horribly <laughs> I <know>. inappropriate. <laughs> there was like this quick little moment where I was like, should I even say that? <laughs> yes, of course you should. And because I, this is us and, and this I, is who we are. And I did. And, and I'm it. hoping by the time this thing comes out, he doesn't die. No! Because then they'll be yeah. like, oh, really? They're making... He's alive. Too soon. I just want to Too point soon. out right now, John McCain is alive. Yes, alive and, alive and well. I was, no, no. Alive. He's alive. He's still kind of well. Okay. We wish him the best. Absolutely. We don't we wish him the worst. No. We no. didn't mention anything about Anthony Bourdain since we did our last show, uh-huh. Anthony Bourdain. Should we do that now? I don't want to go he into is it. is dead. I know. It's so depressing. Mm-hmm. Did you watch his show? Were you a Bourdain fan? Um, you actually turned me on to him I... when we lived together. And um, I kind of dug him. I liked the fact that he had the capability to be a snarky asshole. Yeah. Um, and I liked... But I also liked his just inclusiveness of all cultures. Although I did read something, and this could be fake news, I don't know. But I read something the other day that uh, he never filmed in Sweden. Uh-huh. And he was, or was it Switzerland? Sweden, I believe. Nah, I don't remember. Anyways, whatever it was, he was not, he was afraid of that country. He was afraid of everything having to do with that country. Weird, that it is It was an weird. actual phobia of his. Well, he, he, he would make 
uh, disparaging remarks about vegetarians. Oh, yeah. He did that. He didn't have... I mean, he's one of those guys, if he didn't like something, he would let you know. He was opinionated. But I, I kind of was a little surprised you just said I turned you on to him because I don't remember really being that much into him at that time. Maybe I was. I was like really big into Andrew Zimmern. This is true. Still am. Uh, Bizarre Foods. Mm-hmm. I'd like to watch it. Mm-hmm. And then people would say, have you ever watched Anthony Bourdain? I was like, no, I don't know anything about him. And so eventually, after a lot of Andrew Zimmern uh, shows, sure. I started watching him. And I didn't like him at first. And then I really started catching on to it. So that whole kind of uh, the, the, the literature and the monologue that's kind of going while he's on his quest. Yes. Was very interesting, oh, and yeah. I really—I don't know. It's kind of like it was much more academic, unless he had an opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, he always had opinions and stuff, but he just—it was just well written mm-hmm. and well spoken, and so you just kind of feel like you're getting an education. Whereas, you know, with Andrew Zimmern, you might get to watch him eat raccoon balls. There's that, yeah. um, which is you know, I dreamt about last night, but. Um, oh, no. Andrew Jim, Andrew Zimmern eating raccoon balls is really not a dream I'd like to have. No, now I'd that rather, I've said I think that, I'd rather have water dripping on my head. Now that I've night. said that, I will wake up at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> after a nightmare of, with Andrew Zimmern actually in your bed eating eating raccoon, raccoon balls. balls. Want some balls? Ah, I have to fix my. I wonder lock. if he listens to the podcast. Hi, Andrew. Sorry. Hi. How <laughs> them balls? Anyways, um, so okay, so I lost my train of thought because you're an asshole. You were. Uh, w- w- were you talking about the um, your meeting at work? No, that was Did a while back. That? I didn't know if, if I interrupted you while you were saying that. No. We were um, talking about Bourdain. Yes, and what I was going to say about Bourdain, thank you, was uh, that he he was always very, like comparing him to Zimmern. Uh-huh. Zimmern always felt like, when I would watch him on his shows, it always felt like he was, he was trying. Like he was trying to be... Um, Polite, include. Now we got the cat in here. It's too. like a zoo. <laughs> well, like he Start was trying about to be food, and all the animals show up. Polite and yeah. and inclusive, and you know, humble, and all these things. And that kind of felt like he was acting, or or just trying a little too hard. Now Anthony would walk in your house, sit down, and just lean back in a chair and get comfortable. Mm-hmm. You could tell he was actually. Uh, uh, genuinely comfortable in his body yeah. and in his surroundings, regardless of what those surroundings were. Well, I think that um, one of the big differences, and I may be wrong, just just based on my kind of impression of them. I don't know either of them. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> Andrew Zimmern is the kind of person who really wants you to like him. Yes. He tries hard to get you to like him. He's a people person. Yeah. I, he's a pleaser. I, it always blows me away. But he, I mean, he likes being the center of the stage. He likes being under the spotlight. Mm-hmm. He doesn't mind standing up in a restaurant and making a big speech and asking people questions. Right. He loves people to look at him. Right. Anthony Bourdain was kind of like, I just get the got the feeling that he didn't give a rat's ass whether you liked him or not. No. And why would he? But Why would he, he? But he also loved people. He talked about how much he loved people, meeting people, even people he disagreed with. He just liked communicating with people. But his goal was almost selfish in mm-hmm. that he wanted to meet those people for himself. Yeah, he didn't want to meet those people to make them like him. Right. That's uh, they. You know, if you don't like me, that's fine. I'll walk away. But I'm interested in you, and I'm interested in learning about you. Yeah. So it 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 was it was a different uh, different outlook, I guess, on life. No, I hate to see him go. I mean, anybody in that kind of pain, you know, it, I I was really surprised at the amount of people who were affected by him. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't seen that even since Robin Williams. I mean, even, I think Prince and David Bowie kind of died in between Robin Williams and Anthony Bourdain. And a lot of people, you know, talked about that. But it just seemed like Robin Williams had so many people that he affected because he did so much stuff. Right. And then Anthony Bourdain, I was really surprised at how many people have come out. Well, you also have to look at the at the similarities between the two people you said mm-hmm. that did and the two people you said that didn't. They yeah. died. Right. The two people that got True. all the attention, they took their own lives. And please, anybody who's listening, if if you are suffering, if you are hurting, and if you need assistance of any kind, please, please, please reach out. There are a number of um, phone numbers and websites and and and. Uh, facilities at your disposal so so please just try something else first i have a theory i wasn't planning on going down this rabbit hole 
I don't want to get into a big thing about depression. We've done a show about that, and I think we should do another one. Mm -hmm. But I have a theory okay. about that. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, someone said, you never expect the people who are going through it to be responsible for taking care of themselves. Because well, they're I, not going to. I agree with you. There is a feeling, because I try to tap in. A lot of times I try to understand what what would cause Robin Williams, the most one of the most talented people in the world, a millionaire, had everything he wanted, a wife, kids, um, a huge house, a career. He was going through some sicknesses. He was getting ready to, to uh, I think he had a certain, um, it was something like um, Parkinson's. And I don't know if it was Parkinson's, but I think he had just been recently diagnosed. And I think he just kind of thought, I don't want to go down that path. So I don't want to go down that road. I, I don't want to be I, an old person do that. But I can't say that that's that's the reason that. Well, he, I don't. I'm not saying it's the reason. I'm just saying that maybe you know that was one of the things that caused him to start reflecting on whether he wanted to continue to go. And and, and who knows what Anthony Bourdain was going through. But but people say that a lot of times. And what you said, and I'm not saying there's no value in that. You you do need to ask people to reach out. But I know when I try to tap into the feelings that I was going through when I was going through some depression. There's this thing that if I reach out for help, mm -hmm. I am um, making what I'm going through, um, I'm belittling that. I'm making it not a major thing. And see, some people would say the opposite and say, if I reach out for help, because this is where my mindset has been in the past when I have gone into one of my depressions, one of my deeper depressions, especially right. if I say, Hey Rick, I'm hurting. I'm going through something and I can feel it. I'm, I'm descending. Yeah. Okay. If I were to say that to you, then I feel like I'm giving what's happening way too much power. Okay. So, so that's my, that's what halts me from asking for help. Mine's kind of the exact opposite. Right. I do give it too much power. Right. So it's like, I got had to get talked off of the ledge by a couple of people. And I, I remember one time talking to a friend and he was like, you're giving this way too much power of your life. And I was like, holy crap, you're right. Mm -hmm. But it didn't fix it. But it was just that awareness. But I can remember like most of my major depressions came after the relationships breaking up, especially marriages. Sure. And the first time was the worst. I, after that first time, I kind of realized what I needed to do to keep that from ever happening again. But for someone to come along and go... You need to get help. You can talk to someone and it'll get better. It, in my mind, it was just like, I don't know that I want to be better because then it's just saying you can overcome this. And I don't know that I want to. That's a major thing. Why would I want to overcome it and put it behind me? Because I need to, it was like, I, I felt like there was, a, there. I needed to look at it as if it's a major thing and to, and to um, overcome it would suddenly make it like, oh, that's just one of those things you could step over. But no, nobody would ever, or I personally would never, ever tell you, oh, it's easy if you just try, because that's a, that's a bald-faced lie. No, I understand that, um, but I'm just saying in your, in your time of warped mentality, because right. your mind does warp and you, have, you listen to these weird voices in your head, Right. You, you, you just, for me anyway, it's just like, I don't want, like that relationship was the most important thing in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want someone to say, I'm going to get over it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get over it. Well, let me also just preface for our listeners that, and I won't go into any detail because it's your detail to share if you ever wanted to, but you had some guilt wrapped up in that depression too. Well, you, we, okay. So like my, uh, I've been through, uh, <laughs> we've talked about it. I've been through three divorces. Yes, you have. My first one. I was not one of them, by the way. Well, I no, was not. We, we were never married. married. So the first one, I made the decision to end it. And the next two, I did not. But mm -hmm. the first one I did, and that I had guilt for five, six, seven years mm -hmm. because of that. Even though it was the right decision to do, to know that I was the one who said no more. And, and two, there are circumstances which I won't go into, but the circumstances at the time, when I, when I stand back and look at it, were kind of horrifying. Sure. And it almost made me look like a big asshole. Which I didn't feel like it, but it, but I I just I can't go into all of the details, no. but it's just like but but I carry that guilt for many many years. I think I think there's there's some of that tucked away somewhere in there still. No, I think I've 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 as I've gotten older. Well, I've there was to, when I met you. Let's put it that probably, way. probably yeah a little bit yeah. But I mean each you know each there's a little step. Little it's been step, a decade. So yeah yeah yeah. So I mean uh, but I mean I've I've handled it. I. 
I can look at it now and go, oh, I could have done that totally better or different. Well, sure. But the first time you ever do anything in your life, right. you're going to do it the way it feels that you need to do it. And then after you do it, then you can turn back and critique it if you so choose to. And then the next time something like that should happen, if it does, you you think or hopefully use what you learned from the first time. Keely, what are you doing? You, you learn from the first time and you bring that into you know yeah. the next scenario hopefully trying to to make it easier better i don't know what the word is well i mean relationships no relationship is fun to end no unless you hated the person but and that could be really fun but even when there were relationships that should have ended just it's still painful yeah to go through it, especially if you're married or you were into it for an extended uh, amount of time it truly is yeah and so i I don't know, just coming to that point where you sit there and you just go, I failed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. like, I failed. Even after my second marriage, in which he was abusive, mm -hmm. uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of the above, sexually, what mm -hmm. have you, every which way, mm -hmm. um, starting with being uh, gaslighted from day one, uh, we were together for six years, and at, it took me probably three years to get over that yeah um because there i still had i had been so screwed up emotionally and mentally during the relationship that after the relationship i still had this ultimate feeling of guilt and um failure and all these things even though everybody around me was saying i'm so glad you're not in that relationship anymore right. and because then you that just was hurtful punch them. and painful yeah. and i'm like you know yeah. what Shut i up. yeah hmm. <laughs> and then and then you get the regret of i've wasted the last 6 years of my life yeah and it, well too you there's a thing like why didn't you tell me on the first time cuz you came over to the house and had sandwiches with us and you acted like we were Fine. just perfect together yeah. why didn't you tell me earlier yeah, 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 and 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 then you start blaming other sure. people, and you do all the whole thing. But yeah, it took it takes a hot minute to get over something as emotionally draining slash screwy like that. Well, if there's anything that I've discovered, and I still go through depressions, I still have depressions, and um, nothing any any bigger than you know the first time I ever went through anything, sure, sure. but. Um, the one thing that I discovered, life is, for the better or for the worse, life constantly moves. It does. And when you're laying in bed and you don't want to get out, you don't care whether nope. it's moving or not. No. Nope. But the reality is the pain, the suffering, the, the, the turmoil that you're going through whenever you're going through crap, it will change. For better or worse, sometimes it might get worse. I can't say it will get better. But if you hang on... You're going to have a different scenery at some point. So and you always have an opportunity to change your reaction to that scenery. Well, that's ob obviously that is all within your power is to change your reaction. But depression is not a reaction. Depression is simply it is, is a mental scenario in which you don't necessarily have control over. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I do also believe that... Um, if you just stick it out as yeah. long as you can and do anything you possibly, possibly can to try to make it better, even if it feels futile, even if it feels like it's not doing anything, you're still making it through the day. Yeah. Eventually, it will change. I wonder, I've often wondered if Anthony Bourdain... Or Robin Williams could could just have a day where they could see the reaction of the people of what would happen after they died. No. What could, what would, I mean, would that change their mind? I mean, no. I guess when they're sitting there thinking, my life sucks, whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I don't think they know what the reaction of people would be. Well, let me, let me just get a little personal here. I have um, committed suicide, uh, if you will, because I did die. I died several times uh, that night. And um, I have seen the reaction of people who love me and care about me after the fact. And mind you, they probably were much more able to allow their anger to come out because I was okay. You know, or ah, not okay, but because I was still alive. 
they allowed that anger to happen. Now, had I actually not survived that suicide, um, I don't know that they would allow them, themselves the ability to feel that anger. They would have just felt the grief and, and what have you. Um, but because I was alive, oh, I heard it. I heard all of it, and I heard a lot of it. And I, I got the brunt of it after the fact. I, I, I killed myself, and then I got the shit beat out of me by everybody around me. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, if, if I had died, and if I, you know, I mean, I don't believe in ghosts per se, but if my consciousness still existed somewhere mm -hmm. and I could see the reaction of my loved ones. Um, Would I, it make a difference? No. But I think because that's... Because it was never, it was never, it was never, um, and mind you, everybody who's listening, this was decades ago. This yeah. was, this is not anything recent. Um, but it was never about anybody else around me. It was strictly about me. I was a completely self-absorbed, self-centered... That's depression, though. Self I mean, that is that. enthralled yeah. person mm -hmm. who the, everybody else's life around me mattered not. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and there were some other things. There was some... Uh, some substance abuse going on and not to mention doctors had me on multiple different substances that they were giving me and then I was taking other things and just screwing my psyche up like you wouldn't believe. So there was a lot happening and it didn't involve any other person. Not another person. The human mind is is uh, weird and can be torturous. Even to the point, and this sounds so minuscule but it's just like when you have a song that won't get out of your head for a week or two and it keeps playing over and over and over and over and over and, over. and after a while you start it, it'll drive you crazy and you can't get it out no matter how much you try to the and then you start doing other things to try to get rid of it and then all of a sudden next thing you know you're singing it again and this goes on if it's what your mind will do with voices to an extreme it will it's almost like your mind. What was that movie that um, uh, uh, Michael Keaton was in? Was it Birdman or something like that? Mm -hmm. Where he kept having these like I don't know voices or visions that was trying to get him to kill himself. Right. You you can't argue with it because it's your mind and it's what you think you are anyway. Yep. So it's telling you what to do anyway. It it it's a very very I don't know the people who just sometimes just say call for help, do this, whatever. I'm sure that helps some people, mm -hmm. and that's if you can get some people, that's great. But I, but I also think that it totally ignores the depth and despair of reality. And it's just like I don't know if you could just go, "Hey, I've been there. It sucks. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You think it's not going to get better, and you know what? It might not for a while. Mm -hmm. All I can say is, please write it out." Go through the pain. Let yourself be pain. Write some stuff about the pain. Write about the experience. Let it be painful because it's going. You're not going to get rid of the pain for a while. But the longer you experience the pain, eventually you will be free enough to experience a different pain another day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, and that's what we're we're just humans. That's part of being human. You have to remember that your current state of being will not last forever. Right. It This is not forever. But it don't might, get off the ride. It might feel like forever. Honestly, feeling what you feel when you are at that moment where you think, I could kill myself today. Yeah. That feels like forever. Go to bed. Get up the next day. <laughs> and, and try to... Do, and try again. The whole, it gets better movement, I just want there to be a movement of it gets shittier because it it's does. It's going to get worse. It gets shittier and then it gets better. Yeah. And then it gets shittier and then it gets better. But the better usually lasts longer than the shitty. Or, and it's so much more worth living for. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I ever got to a point where I tried to kill myself, but I did get to a point where it's just like, if someone killed me, I don't care. Right. If I walked in front of a bus and died, I don't care. I've been through that many times. I can't remember a time I've actually been suicidal, but, um, but, but during those times when I just, I didn't want to get out of bed, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. It, no, nothing anyone told me could make a difference. Nothing. But it's just, the reality is just keep writing it. Mm -hmm. Keep writing it and see what's next. You've got to look at it life as 
an e-ticket ride. It's just like you got to keep doing it because the next day it's it might be crazy scenarios, scenarios, but you might meet a person the next day who's going to be your best friend for life and and a jewel and you'll never forget them and you'll be like wow mm -hmm. if i did that i missed that opportunity i mean it could be anything anything a dog sure maybe you meet a dog it's like your favorite dog mm -hmm. you you have a partner for life or maybe you read a passage in a book yeah. that changes something in your mind or you write a book or you write your own book yeah and 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 I've read some books written by people who were suffering from depression at the time that they wrote the books, and some of those books are are terribly lovely. Yeah, I mean, and I mean that literally. They're lovely and they're terrible, <laughs> and they're. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can feel every aspect of what that person is going through by reading their book. Yeah, and and that's what touches people. That's what moves people. Um, and, and to know that that person stayed alive that day and stayed alive the next day to continue writing that book yeah. and me being, and, and, and hundreds of thousands of people being, you know, moved by it. That's something beautiful in the world that, that wouldn't have been shared had they decided to just say, screw it and kill themselves. Um, I am, I am, uh, I am a proponent of the right to die. Yeah. Uh, for folks who have no quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, like me. I know what you're saying. I, I'm reading it. I'll be there for you. If you need me to be your Kevorkian, I will. Okay. Um, however, uh, you know, I, I get that, and I'm a proponent of it. I, if that's your choice, that's your choice. I get it. You could do but that, if though, you're right? Doing, if you're doing it because you're in pain and you don't ever think your life is going to get any better, mm -hmm. however, physically and socially and everything you there is hope and other people can see hope for you mm -hmm. it just it doesn't make sense to me i know but you know that's always the key it doesn't make sense because depression never makes sense no the, it makes the, zero the, sense the voices in your head never make sense they mm -mm. just don't they're irrational and that's what's so hard about fighting depression is you're fighting irrational thoughts you cannot wake the person up they have to do it themselves there are certain little bits and pieces that you can do and i always say the best thing you could do is be there for them absolutely be their friend every day don't deny their feelings don't tell them what they're feeling is wrong or that they, don't say it's going to get better because it might not for and a while please don't ever ever tell them to snap out of it no I but will just punch you. be there make some food for them take them for a walk go bring them some books bring them videos mm -hmm. bring them some porn sure i don't care Whatever. just do have it have sex with them be there and i always feel like the thing is don't don't ever deny their feelings and don't tell them it's going to get better. The whole it gets better thing, sometimes I, I understand it, mm -hmm. but it might be months before it gets better. Mm -hmm. I just feel like you just have to say, I know whatever, but despite what you're feeling, you're valuable to me. Yes, you are valuable. And I want you to hang on for me. If you don't go to do it for yourself, do it for me. Please. And I will be here every day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just think that to me would was the thing that kind of made the biggest difference. And, it, you know, Kids do it, even though their parents are there. But I think they feel like their parents think, you know, it doesn't really matter. But I just think you really have to be present for the people. You absolutely have to be but present. There's, there's not going to be any one solution. It's just not going to happen. I mean, you got to think Anthony Bourdain had a lot of friends, had a lot of people who would have rescued him if he called on them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but, he, but didn't. he didn't. Neither did Robin Williams. Nope. They just and the, and they kind of ended the same. It's just like this is it. This is all I'm going to do. And, and you think about it, and you think, okay, now, me having suffered from uh, many different episodes of, of some pretty serious depression, I, even when I, f when... <coughs> you all right over there? You're not going to... Um... Hush. Sorry. All right. I'm getting just, sick. Just checking. Even when I felt like I had reached out, mm -hmm. nobody saw that as a, as a reach out. To them, it wasn't. But to me, it took a lot of effort to send that text. Sometimes it's, Do you it's know what like I mean? a little pinky finger and they don't know it. That one little text, just to send that, took me hours to get up the, you know, I got to do this. And and then to not get a response yeah. is crushing yep. when you're in that moment. Yeah. So I I, I think that, that the, the thing that most people out there can do for their friends and family 
and and even acquaintances who might be going through something like this, you know, respond. Just respond. Would you reach out more to a family person or a stranger, do you think? I think I would reach out more to a stranger. Would you really? Yeah, because um, I... I don't know. Maybe a stranger wouldn't respond, but I always feel like a family person. I already know them, and maybe they would. Uh, I would feel like they wouldn't be as genuine or something. I don't know. I I would think I'd be more for me anyway, uh, likely to reach out to a stranger. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we said we weren't going to make this a depression show, and we did. Damn, we did. What the heck? I don't know. Um. Okay. So here's something we <gasps> were talking about, Andrew Zimmer earlier. Mm-hmm. Here's something I saw on TV earlier um, today. I was watching a murder show as i do because i like to watch murder on I tv do too. i really do i was watching the id channel and uh-huh. there's a murder show Absolutely. and they sh- it's, it's always a recreation of course they never have a camera they're actually filming the actual murder no so they always then have they to could recreate. be like in trouble i do that. feel like that that should be a show they do in the future though but anyway we won't, we won't talk about that there's we, movies on that so anyway so this person they found this person they found mm-hmm. the body and they're showing the recreation and the guy and the cop is doing the narration and the cop says something about yeah it's all covered in maggots Maggots. And they show the, quote, body laying there, Mm -hmm. and it's got maggots on it. So this actor who's laying there being the dead body, like dead body number one in the credits, uh, is covered in maggots. But here's what I think is interesting. Somewhere during the production process, Mm -hmm. the director said, where can we get some maggots? We need some maggots here. Could someone call and get some maggots? And the guy is just like, yeah, there's a maggot wrangler down on Maine. Let's call that person. So they call and they go, no. we need to get That's some maggots for a shoot that we're doing. Because, you know, this is this is the movie industry and there's people who specialize. So there's somebody who specializes in maggots. They they grow maggots for movies. But that's what I'm saying. If you need crickets, this pe- these people will help. They got yeah. crickets, the, the, the moths. They can do moths if you're yeah. doing Silence of the Lambs. The, Hissing cockroaches. It, the, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, all those mm-hmm. spiders and mm-hmm. snakes. Someone has all of that stuff. Now, some of it's CGI. But these were actual maggots. Yeah. So they had to call up an actual maggot wrangler. Call the maggot man. And they're like, uh, "We need some maggots." He's like, "Well, how many maggots would you like?" I would like ten thousand and two. Of, a couple of gallons sure. of maggots. Sure. We're we're just gonna pour them on. Send two five gallon buckets of maggots. Please. Can you wonder how much a maggot? Do they charge by the maggot or by the ounce? I don't know. And then what do they do with the maggots after it's over? Do they kill them? Oh, I would hope not. That would be awful. That's awful. The maggots can help to. it. You're not allowed to do that. You cannot. No maggot <laughs> no maggots was were harmed in the making, in of, the this. making of this movie. Um, maggot and, ramb- Wrangler. I think that that's a respectable uh, career move for me. I, I think that's the band name of the day. <laughs> maggot Wranglers. Maggot Wranglers. Yeah. It's like a country band. <laughs> Hi, we're the Maggot Ramblers. Wranglers. Ramblers. Ramblers. I keep wanting to say Ramblers. It's because you're rambling. Um, yeah, maggots. Yeah. No one likes the mags. Speaking of speaking of uh, movie industry, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yes. I live in Atlanta. We we both we we live, live and in broadcast Atlanta. Atlanta. and broadcast Atlanta. from Atlanta. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, has become uh, the maggot capital of the world. Tiny Hollywood. Um, there's constantly film trucks, like every. Yes. Almost every morning. I live mm-hmm. in downtown Atlanta. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I, I work uh, just, I'm still in Atlanta proper, but it's just north of the downtown area. Mm-hmm. And I see these lighting trucks every morning. Yep. Every morning. It could be, as a matter of fact, I've had to go out of my way to get home because of this. They've Stupid blocked trucks. off a street and it's all lighting trucks and stuff. Um, and it's just, to me, it just seems. Like at first it was like, ooh, that's exciting. Now it's just kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, it's um, there's like Grant Park is where I live. And well, if you lived in New York, you it's like all the time. You yeah. have it all the time. Yeah, like Jumanji was filmed in Grant Park. Oh yeah. So while they were filming the new Jumanji, so what your name was there? Um, 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 oh, um Gillian, Gillian, cat. What's your name? Doctor I don't Who? know. <laughs> Amy Pond from Doctor Who. Why Karen I... Gillan. Karen. She was in Jumanji. Did, did she film here? I don't she know. I know uh, Dwayne Johnson 
was in the park. Oh, as, so as she well. was too then. I'm it sure. It had to have been, yeah. Man, what if it was the time that she was in at Dragon Con? I'm kind of going off into a tangent. I apologize. You, Go back you're, to you're your a little story. You're a little Karen obsessed at this moment. Go back to I don't story. blame you for that. She's gorgeous. But she's young. She's young. She's young enough to be my daughter. Yeah, how about we don't go down Too tall road. to be my daughter. No, no, really she's really not because you're kind of a tall guy. <laughs> she should be on the show. Um, she should be. Karen, would you like to be on our show? I would we... love for you to come and talk with us. Mm-hmm. You can talk about your experience in Grant Park. That's right. Yeah. With Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I live right there. You can just come hang out and come stay. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so I, I don't even remember the point I was trying to make. I was just talking about being in Atlanta with lighting trucks and movies. And you hated it. You used to like it, and now it it's just a pain ass. in the ass. Yeah, it's just a pain in the ass. I still like it. I love it. It is. It does kind of have that. Little I bit mean, of a... redirecting and all of that is is definitely a pain. But I just I don't know. I like it. I well, like being a place that has that. If you haven't seen the meme going around, it, it's been a minute now, but there's a meme that shows like downtown Manhattan and downtown Atlanta. And downtown Manhattan has this, uh, it's an aerial view. It has this saying that says, we like you to know where you are and where you're going and how to get there. And it's like a grid. You know, there's yes. streets going north to south and streets going south or east to west. And then below that is Atlanta, and the the words across the overall uh, overhead view of Atlanta just say "fuck you," uh, because <laughs> we don't want you to know where you are at any given moment, because that's it's how Atlanta is. The, I don't know. It's easy to get around Atlanta. I think it is now, but if you're new to the place, it's really not. Maybe I don't know. I just drove through. Um, just the traffic is all you got to worry about. Oh, your dog. I told you. I warned you. He's going to run oh us out. Oh, my God. Buddha. Buddha. He rips them, man. I'm telling you. Stinky. It's a good time to close down the podcast. We're getting to the end Let's of the podcast. Let's close on a dog. Bite. I had a confession I was going to make. We're out of time. So I'm going to have to do it next week. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I had this. I don't know how to explain it. This weird, romantic situation that just um, didn't end well. Ooh, is that what we're going to talk about on the next podcast? Yeah, because I want to get your advice on what I should should have done and what I should do. I am so good at giving relationship advice. I know. And this is something I didn't want to talk about. I'm Uh kind of embarrassed to talk about it. And I wasn't going to bring it up Uh because of this for several reasons, but I don't know. I feel like maybe I should. So I think you should. I'm out of time now. We'll talk about it next week. Absolutely. But right now, let's um, talk about what we think of our, our little beer friend here. Okay, let's discuss the beer. Mexican honey, imperial lager. Uh, Imperi- indeed, imperial lager is what he just said. Indeed Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. This is the uh, brewing company, Indeed. Indeed. Um, what do you think? It's actually quite good. It is. Um, I'm enjoying it. It does definitely have a little citrus uh, flavor to it. No bitterness, though? No Not little really. sour aftertaste? I will say, though, that it's kind of one-noted. It is a bit one-noted, but I will tell you, I like a one-noted beer. Well, you used to like Coors Light. That's too. what I'm saying. Sometimes when you're having food, you don't want the beer to compete with your food. You just want one little taste. I am. T- I will tell you this. What's that? That eight percent alcohol. You can feel it after a while. It kind of you can feel it a little bit. Well, no, I'll tell you right now. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't believe you. Okay. Anybody who else who can who can hear Rick no. get drunk during the podcast? It's not. I want drunk. you. What it, are you talking about? I want you to actually send us a contact. Send us some kind of email. You can reach us at thisepicdisaster at gmail dot com. You can also reach us on Facebook at facebook dot com slash thisepicdisaster, and we're on Twitter and Instagram. This look epic, for us. Just, just look for us. us. You'll find us on the internet. But please, please, please send me a comment about whether you can or cannot tell that Rick gets tipsy during the podcast. I'm not tipsy for one thing. I'm just not. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I can feel the funness of the beer. Oh, the, oh this is a funness That's feeling. What is what, okay. Don't drive funness, people. Nope. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5. I'm right. giving it a three and a half. I like this beer. I'm going to give it a three. I'm giving it a 3.5. I do. It's got a nice... Uh, so that's two Minnesota beers in a row that we both liked. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. All Dig right. Um, I'm going to be going out of town for a while, like I said. This next podcast for next week, we're going to record it right now in a minute. Which means Rick is already tipsy, and we're going to drink another beer. And we're going to talk about 
my romantic experience. This is going to be a good show. Oh, this is going to get personal. All right. I definitely would listen to the next week's show. So also, if you want stickers to say that you did listen to our show by putting them on your car, on your window, on your guitar case, whatever you do, uh, just send us an email at thisepicdisaster at gmail.com and send us a mailing address. Doesn't have to be yours. A mailing address. And we will just put stickers in an envelope and send them to you. Now, quickly, I just want to say we have new stickers. Oh, that's right. They're black and white, which <gasps> I right. think are very punk rock looking. What we discovered is that the color stickers, the yellow and the red, do not survive the sun very long. They so fade I, pretty quick. If you've got those stickers, put don't put them on a car. Put them somewhere else. Get the black and white stickers, which we have new. All you got to do is send us a request. We'll mm -hmm. send you black and white stickers. If you send us a request now, we'll send you black and white and color stickers. Sure. You can have both. Oh, we're just giving away freaking stickers. They're care. just stickers. So uh, black and white, cool stickers. Those will go on your car. Color stickers, put them on your guitar case or something like that. Yeah, that Anything way they like won't that. be in the sun as much. Um, also, we will be doing a live broadcast, 4th of July, which we're calling 4th of July live. Because mm -hmm, it's live. Yeah. I have no idea yet what we're going to be doing, but I think we're going to announce the the results of our playlist, summer playlist, which yes. everybody's been voting for. I would just say keep voting. Keep on voting for that. And then 4th of July, we'll cut it off and we'll do the 4th of July. Yes, we will. And we'll tell you what our summer playlist is on that show. And yeah. we'll probably, I don't know, we should get a really good beer on that show. Also, I have to Maybe say to any of my time. actual uh, acquaintances who <laughs> listen to the show, one of you... <laughs> mentioned a song to me and they were you were like add that to your playlist and i said okay and, and now i don't even remember who you are wow so, or the song or the, obviously the song. not the song you should never so, forget the person uh, well i don't remember who it was that said it so yeah. um i need you to go ahead and send that in uh via <laughs> or email tell you again or write it down and stick it to my forehead because i will forget yeah 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 all right well we'll close the podcast down all right and uh make sure you come back next week and listen we'll have a whole new show even though i won't be here Thanks for listening. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.